Laura, one of the things we talked about in our main podcast was the gut versus fear debate and which side of the fence you can come down on, the consequences that can come as a result of that and how important it is, if you can, make fear your friend. Just explain that a bit more. Why do you want a friend that's called fear? What is important about making (laughs) fear your friend? Um. I guess I can speak personally in the fact that for me, fear has been what has stopped me doing a lot of things up until now. Um, Whether it's believing that I could even finish my GCSEs, that was all based on fear. Um, And I think since learning my own personal fears and where they root from, honestly, has been a real big thing. And kind of just cutting myself free from fear as well as making it my friend has been a really important thing. So kind of, yeah, just with a tooth comb, just going through those fears that you have and kind of understanding where they started, what triggered them and whether I want those things to have a hold on me anymore. And nine times out of 10, something that somebody said to me 10 years ago, or maybe at school is, is probably not a fear that I should keep with me anymore. So um, yeah, I think there's an element of letting go of, of the past and the things that don't serve you anymore and also using those fear as your fire and, and, and knowing that, okay, you might feel fear from this thing and it might have been happened to you a long time ago or, you know, a trauma that it, it kind of keeps rearing its head. But um, yeah, the, the more you attack them um, and make them your friend, you can achieve pretty amazing things, I think, if you've got fear in your back pocket. What's the greatest fear that you've had to overcome, do you think? Not being good enough. Not being good enough. That is one that I battle every day. I think many people do. And even still now, like since I've surfed these waves, I still feel sometimes like I genuinely haven't done it. Like there's a part of me that thinks like, I can't do that. And I'll still see videos and pictures of that day and be like, I don't think I did that. And um, yeah, it's just the fear that I'm not enough to be in this kind of world and, and having to fight that every day and literally prove to myself day in, day out that, you know, I am this person that I'm perceiving to be. I think imposter syndrome is uh, definitely rife in athletes. Um, but yeah, no, definitely fear of not being good enough and fighting that every day and knowing that that's my fear in my back pocket and I have to get up every day and do everything I can to prove that fear wrong is is something that um yeah I'm very passionate about <laughs> why do, why do you think imposter syndrome's rife in athletes I I happen to also agree with you but why why do you think that's the case I'd love to have that answer. I actually cried to my manager on the phone yesterday about this exact thing. Um, And he said that many of us all deal with the same thing. We all think that we're not good enough to get the sponsorship deals that we kind of need to do our sport. We all think that, um, yeah, that we're never going to basically achieve the things that we've already achieved, which just sounds so strange. But I think for me personally, it's that I grew up with this, you know, big goal of of being... um, yeah, an advocate for women in sport and to, you know, push the limits within my sport physically. And and now that I'm there and I'm really doing that, it's hard to believe that I've done the things that I had kind of dreamed of for so many years. And I think coming to terms with that is, um, yeah, that's where imposter syndrome for me really lies. And and yeah, just thinking that I deserve, you know, the the opportunities and things that come from um, everything that I'm I'm doing, I suppose, is yeah, where my imposter syndrome lies. And again, it comes from not not feeling good enough or not feeling that you're enough to kind of achieve these things that that you already have. It's such a strange feeling, um, and and yeah, I guess thing to go through, but. Um, it's something that I'm definitely aware of and I think the more I talk about it to other athletes and other people that are um, in kind of high pressure careers that we all go through the same thing and again it just comes back to that kind of fear of not being good enough I I really think and um, yeah we're always working on it. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I wonder if you sort of um, start when you start first encountering or thinking like that, you probably feel intensely lonely. 
in that thought and wondering if you're the only person that at that level's ever felt like that. But I guess talking to other people about it and talking to other athletes about it and other successful people about it, I think performance people, you know, I dare say, um, about, about that probably makes you realize, does it not that it's, it's much more commonplace than you'd think. And that there's an awful lot of people that are the battling that as well. When, when do those thoughts, do you think, when did they first sort of creep in? When did, they first sort of enter the conversation because you know as a 12 year old presumably you wouldn't have had those thoughts so when did they start to occur do you think I would definitely say in the last year for me um I guess in the moment where I really found who I was and you know for the first time in my life I had this goal and I had you know this thing that I was driving towards which was obviously the big waves and and nothing else was confusing for probably the first time in my life. I knew exactly where I was heading. I knew exactly, you know, what I was training for. So I think that for me was the start of the imposter syndrome because I kind of was just doubting whether this goal that I had created for myself was even an attainable one. And then all of a sudden I was in Nazare and I was on the back of the road and I was like, oh my God, what, like, who do you think you are? Um, and then I surfed big waves and still I was like, oh my God, like who do, who does this girl think she is surfing these huge waves and possibly going to get absolutely battered? And um, the more I do it, the imposter syndrome definitely um, gets a little bit less. But then I think the more you achieve it also is kind of like kicking at the heels that little bit more because you are achieving the things. And um, yeah, it's just baffling honestly to me that still I have the mental strength to pull out the bag when I need to pull it out the bag so um yeah for that I'm proud of myself for sure but definitely takes some um yeah imposter syndrome fighting <laughs> and is it is it something that you can do on your own or do you need help to to get you there do you speak to a sports therapist is there somebody that can kind of get you over this hurdle and or is it friends and family I mean who do you turn to to sort of appease this feeling which must be nagging and draining and tiring to manage um yeah no it's true I'm I'm a pretty open person at this point, honestly. I've had enough ups and downs, mental battles that me and my family are a very open book. Um, so actually, yeah, it was just yesterday I was having this conversation with them and my dad was like, Laura, how much more do you want? Like, well, I've seen photos of you surfing a 60 foot wave, so I don't know how much more verification you need that you've actually done it. And I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're a matter of fact family, that's for sure. And they're great. They, they know that I doubt myself in, in, um, in these moments, but they're also my biggest champions. And I think without them, I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't have the courage to do what I'm doing now. So yeah, they are definitely always fighting my corner, but, um, I've had therapy. I've still got a therapist. She's incredible. She's somebody I should probably speak to a little bit more often, honestly. Um, but she's always there when I need her and, and when, you know, I know when I'm kind of becoming in a real kind of low spiral and, and I'll always go back to her. So just having that in the back of my mind is really special, but I am an avid journaler. I love to meditate. Um, so all these things combined are kind of, um, yeah, just, just big tools for me to be able to achieve what I want to achieve. It's a common theme that's emerging. You know, the more and more athletes that I speak to on this podcast, journaling is a huge part of, of their own journey, actually. And documenting it, I think, really does help to put, you know, whatever's going on up here down on paper makes a massive difference. What's the most latest entry in the journal? Um, let's have a look. Mostly, to be honest, mine are, are it was, <laughs> I've journaled since I was like 12 years old. Since 12, I've journaled like pretty much every day of my life. Oh, wow. So my mum, God bless her, has got like boxes of the things. God forbid she ever opens them and reads them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot. So, so today, if you don't believe that you did do that 60 foot wave, she'll tell you exactly when it happened. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, but yeah, the imposter syndrome was what I was journaling on. And it was just um, that you are who you are and train hard and the rest of it will take care of itself um, and yeah just lots of self-doubt and 
kind of just going through those motions and and not being angry that I have those emotions and feelings and just letting them be and um, as I said yeah just kind of turning them into some sort of power but journaling is amazing I think it's great to also just as athletes it's so easy to bumble along life and not actually give yourself credit for all the little things and little wins along the way because we have such massive goals that it's important to give yourself a little bit of credit along the way which um yeah I think we all struggle with from time to time <laughs> I think you should cut yourself some slack because the rest of us listening or watching think it's amazing what you're doing. Um, and there's no hint of imposter syndrome anywhere near it. So keep going, crack on, take on that next 70 foot wave, whatever it might be. We'll be right behind you. Well, I'll be, I'll be on the beach. You crack on on, on, the, on the water. <laughs> Legend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Laura. 